My name is Kirei and I've been 12 years challenger and I'm the only person in the world to have finished challenger every single season. I've been five times rank one and I've played professionally for eight years and coached pro teams for two years. Having worked with some of the best players in the world, I'm sharing my knowledge that I've learned in the past decade and hope you guys will enjoy and learn a lot. I've been having decent stats. I'm not going to say good because I'm, I'm low-key emerald, so... Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, getting a decent start, getting fed and everything, but then I don't know how to close out the game. I'm mm -hmm. not sure how to, like, snowball into victory. 70% of my games, I'm fed early. Past minute, maybe 15, 20. Mm -hmm. I just feel clueless. And if my team's not winning, then I'm not winning because I don't know how to, like, push them to victory. In EU and E, I have 100... 8 ping, I'm diamond 2, diamond 1. But Middle East, I'm like 15 ping, and I can't get out of Emerald. It's crazy. Okay, okay, okay. We can, we can take a look at it. Middle East Super Server, maybe? Super Server, maybe, maybe. Okay, so TLDR, you stuck at Snowballing, right? It comes very, very, very down to having good base timers, that's one, okay? And as you have good base timers, just recognizing kind of who you want to play with, so... How to snowball in early mid game? How do you play for the right objectives? So I can play for the objective. I have to be aware of who I'm playing for. Or yes. When am I playing for? Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. So as you can see, I think in this game, I'm like trying to path bot all the time. I'm I, I'm not really sure whether I should like strong side Irelia or uh, misfortune locks. But I mean, my MF locks were winning, so I just want to like. Mm -hmm. Snowball them, uh, use them to win the game. Yeah, I'll also write some things down, okay? So basically, it's just like, who you play with, right? So essentially, there's only two ways to lose a game, okay? One mm -hmm. is your laners are boosted. Or your lakers, that's fuck. Your laners are... What the fuck? Okay, it's autocorrect. GG. Unlucky. Are boosted. Okay, there you go. Your laners are boosted. They die to join, right? So essentially, yeah. why I always preach the just who you play with and when is that if you recognize who you play with, hopefully you path into the right lane. And after that, okay, you just have to track jungle. And the key thing is also understand is that you need to understand tempo. So let's look at this, okay? In general, after making play, very likely the enemy team has like a turn, right? Like leaks, like chess, you have one turn, they have one turn, okay? And mm -hmm. let's just look at this game right now. So let's go all the way back from when you're in base, okay? My mental was shit. I was like, yeah, let me record this game because I have a feeling it's gonna go bad. Okay, okay. And I'm <laughs> dead. <laughs> uh, 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 okay, so, I mean, it's fine. I could even see right now, look, you probably got a kill before you based. I assume. I think we're both on the same page here, right? Possibly, yeah. Yeah, okay. very, very, very sure. Because look, mm. right now, Hecrim's literally mid lane and you're on your golems. Mm -hmm. So, what was the mistake you already made here, you think? Having to anticipate Hecarim's gank? Is, is it, like, am I supposed to be thinking that, oh, Hecarim is gonna gank mid, so I should hover that lane, maybe start Raptors instead of Golems? What do you think? I want an answer. I want to hear your thought process first, before I give you mine. So, so this game, uh, autopilot, top to bot. This was legit my thought process. Okay. Yeah, Drake yeah. is up, uh, my... my, my Camps are up top side, so I go for the golems. I finish golems. I path towards bot lane, and and if mid dies, that's their fault. I mean, obviously this can't be wrong. Probably is, but this is what I was thinking in game. Mm -hmm. So path from golems to raptors to wolves, all the way down to a dragon. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay, so it already comes even like before this. Okay, like literally when you're in base, you should have already recognized the wave states. So, when I say wave stays, you should already know how the mid lane wave is, how the top lane wave is, and how the bottom lane wave is. And depending on that information, you have to be able to know at least which side he's ish. So, let's say you tracked him like a bit decently, you know he took his top side camps already. He's probably bot side then, right? Let's say uh -huh. if you tracked, like I didn't watch this game, so I don't know. What I'm trying to say is that the moment you got the kill and you got a base, the enemy team, especially jungler, has home guards. And if he decides to, let's say, skip all his camps, okay, and run towards mid lane, because he sees your minion overextending, and he kills him, it's actually not bad for him, right? But what if he doesn't kill your mid laner and skips his camp? His game is f***ing over now. He wasted a lot of time. Though. Yeah, yeah. Because what's going to happen is that you probably take this, you take this, and then let's say he went all the way back from here to like here, and then let's say his raptor spawn, 
boom. You have mid priority, you can now invade him, you can now go mid into bolt, you can do whatever you want, right? Mm. Okay. So, yeah. so probably here, what the mistake is that after you made a play, you probably didn't recognize um, the tempo map state. And mm -hmm. that is like super important to understand because honestly, when I'm autopiloting, right, I usually just think, okay, like the enemy team can do like one thing. And essentially, as a jungler, if you want to carry games, it's not just like you getting kills, it's as well denying the enemy kills. And that is yeah. like super, super, super important because, like, honestly, I think if I'll play low elo, and I would never ping, or like let's say 50% of the time, even I would low-key struggle in low elo. Because, okay, I wouldn't struggle, but I would still get a lot of kills, but enemy gets a lot of kills, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is like, not good. Here's an example of video regarding tempo in the mid-game. So essentially what you're paying attention to is like death timers. So pay attention to how like, um, there's a fight here, okay? And Ono got a okay. kill here, right? So essentially, you need to look at his death timer. So... Like, no joke, I think till minute 15, if not more, I'm not even kidding here, every single time you get a kill, and you killed enemy joiner, he has like, 100% time tempo. Why do I say it's like, 100% time tempo? Because like, literally, if he decides, okay, not always, not, not like black and white, let's say you don't decide the base, and you decide to stay on the map, you can match this place, right? But If I stay the map? Yeah, if you stay on the map. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. But technically, theoretically, in League of Legends, League of Legends, in... To have the highest chance of winning, after a kill, usually you base to get a better item, right? And mm -hmm. usually you are low. So usually you don't want to fight anymore and you want to spend your gold and then you want to fight, right? Okay, yeah. So if that's the case, the enemy joiner should have tempo, right? Which means that if he decides to skip all his camps and go for a gank and he gets something, it's not bad. But if he fails, it's really bad, okay? So mm -hmm. you should already know the moment you get a kill, what it means. For example, here, Mauke decided to stay. He should already know, okay, Harold is gone, and that's fine. It's like chess, right? So, for example, in this video here, I'm sure you made a kill. And I think the mistake here is that you didn't recognize the map state and what Hecarim can do. And you didn't even bother looking at mid lane wave. And yeah. even bot lane looks a bit scuffed. Mm -hmm. so, so, like, I, I can't see the wave state, right? But to me, it really looks like, in my opinion, that you have to open mid lane here. Because mm -hmm. it's like... You got one kill, so it's one turn, and sometimes to neutralize, you have to match him like one time, or at least like walk mid lane, tell him to push. If Hecarim goes to gank, you're behind him. If he's not there, you farm. So, yeah. so in, in, in this case, if he doesn't gank, wouldn't I necessarily also be wasting time? W wouldn't it be better to like just uh, notify the Syndra if, if, if I was aware that Hecarim might be ganking her? Is it not better to just tell her that? Hecarim's gonna gank soon. Okay, okay. Him to gank. I can tell like lane perspective. Uh -huh. If this wave is freezing towards any, I'm not even kidding here. Even in pro play, people are gonna die. I, I'm, I'm actually serious here. Like, let, let's yeah. say you're a professional jungler here and you're telling your mid laner, let's say your mid laner is capture humanoid. You say, hey, enemy jungler's probably gonna come mid lane. Okay? They might still die because their wave is like bad and they're not gonna like wait 30 seconds for you to like, you know? So you're there and like drop every single CS. So so it is better to anticipate the gank by like moving towards the lane and covering them. Yeah, until just they push their wave. Yeah, and then and they can do raptors always. But here's the thing, right? Uh -huh. You have to remember that you just got a kill, which means that if Hecarim doesn't get anything in the next thirty seconds, it's really bad for him. <laughs> Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, so, yeah. It, it's not like it's bad for you to cover. It's only it's good because like you just have to deny his play sometimes and. Even the solo queue, okay, you have to see what's worth or not, okay? So let's say that it was your top lane is frozen, and let's say all your bottom camps is up, in my opinion, okay, unlucky. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, if let's say you know that, okay, um, mid lane is like literally frozen, and you have you can be around and you don't lose too much, which is like fine, right? It's okay. And I mean, I could probably show you like, um, this one's probably not a good example, but like, okay, for example here, okay? Uh, look. You can literally see that Sidrani here walked on a ward. They literally saw him, okay? Mm -hmm. Just saying, this is LEC. I'm not even talking about your circuit game. Mm -hmm. Like, this guy here at some point, okay? And okay, here's things well that you can learn as well. Is that you see him walking back here. So he thinks that maybe he based. And then as he like lets his guard a bit down, because he sees he's walking back, now he goes in. Mm -hmm. But... You could even see the best players in the world, even if they know you're around, they can still die to f***ing ganks. And laners have like, farm syndrome, 
And I can promise you that laners, when they see the waves dying like this, I can promise you, even the pro play, they will die. So I don't yeah, want yeah. to imagine what happens to your Sodoki teammates when you ping them. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to know. But you know what's going to happen, you know? Yeah, they're, they're going to go for the wave anyways. Yeah. So as a jungler, you shouldn't always be like, oh, I pinged, so why did it die? Mm -hmm. That's just not how okay. it works always, okay? Because it's only normal that you get something, you might have to retemp a little bit to defend, then you full clear, and at some point you're like neutral, okay? So essentially as well, right? I think if you want to snowball, right? What did you fail here? I failed to match enemy jungler. So tracking enemy jungler and, and making sure my sender does not get ganked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. <coughs> I just want to make sure. Do it if it's convenient. Don't do it if it's like really inconvenient. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Just don't run to. I, I'll be fully honest with you. When you say convenient and inconvenient, to me, I feel like I still don't know what what what's considered convenient enough. So I think that just comes with experience. No? Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah. what I consider convenient is that let's say that um, top lane slow pushing here, okay? Mm -hmm. And I know that Hecarim is around top side, but your bot side camps is up, and none of your top side camps is up. Mm -hmm. I will not run to top lane. Just to cover him, when uh, both the camps are up. Yeah, yeah. Because what's going to happen is that if he's good and he doesn't gank, <laughs> you're just sitting behind the top, running from top all the way to bot, and then slash FF. Yeah. yeah. That is a very inconvenient, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. But here, you could literally just run mid lane, right? And then just stand behind. You don't even have to show, by the way. And then tell him to, like, hard push. If Hecarim is there, well, I can promise you, you're probably going to get a kill there. And if he's not there, well... Then you can just take this, this, and then like, do whatever you want to do. Or worst case, you can even skip your golems, okay? And you can take raptors and play into bot side. Because you get free drake, which I think is even better, by the way, right? So in my opinion, this is quite convenient to run through mid, raptors into drake. Because essentially, no matter how good you are, even I in low elo, I cannot play 1v2. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I need people alive to play the game, right? And here, of course, um, ping your ball into play safe. But okay, you see this wave, you see this wave, right? Okay, look, imagine that this wave, let's say the dragon is minion here. I can swear to God, even if you ping 20,000 times that, hey, Hecarim is behind, if your laners have no ward here, they are going to walk they up to, and they yeah. are going to die. Like, okay, not like 100%, but like 95%. And I'm not even kidding here. And even Challenger, this happens. Yes, people are not patient. People okay, don't so, so So if, if I see this, if I see like, okay, now I see that the minion is pushing up and he, a high chance my bot lane is going to push up to like take the wave even if Hecarim might be there yeah from my perspective other than pinging what do i do do i skip my camps is it worth skipping would it be convenient to skip my camps okay but but right now to be honest i don't I, i'm not tracking Hecarim, so i don't know where he is but let's say i tracked him and he was hovering bot side it's worth to start moving towards them uh, it, it, it depends on a few conditions okay it depends on this so it depends on like when is it worth to cover and then not, okay? Like mm -hmm. it's like worth to cover. Okay, so like okay, let's say when is it worth? If your pathing is towards it, right? Um if you don't lose too much time. Um if they are hard winning if they like if they have if they are hard winning and enemy general rounds. Right? Like this it might be like Always, always worth because, like, essentially, if Hecarim doesn't manage to kill a ball in here, it's so over. And I'm not telling you to like sprint there and like sit there behind, I'm telling you to like hover. You can even like drag the camp a little bit towards the bot side. Yeah. And if they over chase, you can help them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so like, here for example, I wouldn't be doing this. I'll probably mm -hmm. like, let's say it depends on their summoners. So, let's say your ball has summoners or let they have ward, of course, they should put down the ward. Like, if they have a ward, ping them, hey, care, care, care. But if they don't have a ward, and they're frozen, I would actually probably move. Yes, I would move. So, okay, now we see that Hakarim is ganking. And they're dead. And bro, I'm telling you, it, it literally... Okay, Hakarim happened to die here, right? But I think, misfortune, if Hakarim played better, he's dead. Oh, I remember this gank. Fucking hell. Yeah. But, but imagine you're here around, by the way. Imagine you didn't do your walls here, and imagine you sprinted. Because mm. you know Hecarim's bot side as well, no? I the, think you saw him. The, the thing is, yeah, the thing is, when I'm in-game, it's like, I don't know if I should have, but obviously after, like, whatever Luke. happens, it's like, oh, I wish I did that. Yeah, 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 I see what you mean. But you can see Hecarim literally moved in the bot side, okay? He literally moved in the bot side. So, 
right now, if you actually came behind on this wave and sprinted, and ping yeah. to be careful. So, so I, I can see that in game, I was like aware about Hikram being bot side because I assessed Drake. So, obviously, I, I know he's hovering that area. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know why I didn't move. I was like. Mm, probably because you thought, okay, hey, he's probably bot side, play safe. But, like I said, bro, I played this game for 11 years. The game doesn't yeah. work like this. You can ping yeah. however you want. If enemy jungle is around and your lane wave is bad, I can literally find one of the clips in LEC. Like, yeah, 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 I'm starting to see it now, honestly, yeah. And, and think about it, like, worst case, okay, worst case, okay, you lose, like, how much, like, 10 seconds, right? Best case, double or triple kill. And, buddy, no, you know, just saying, <laughs> they actually don't think about counter gank. In their head, it doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, of course, honestly, a lot yeah. of people in that ELO, people mm -hmm. don't have the brain capacity yet to think about counter ganks. I mean, sorry for yeah. people that are ELO in the chat, but... But yeah, no, it's fine. I'm, usually, I'm, I'm, I'm the people you're referring to. I'm not offended by any chance. Yeah, no, so I, I'm streaming this, right? So like, <laughs> whoever's like, like Louis oh, in the okay, chat, I'm streaming. I it's see. like, okay. okay, I'm not saying everyone, but like, a lot of the people I coach, they actually don't think about it. So, so yeah, now you probably understand what you should do. But one thing you could do, right, is that let's say that your laners have summoners, okay, and you're like not sure if he's ganking. What you could always do is like pull the Gromp here, and then as they're chasing. You can then like run and help. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? It does, yeah. So you're being efficient, but it depends as well if they're gonna insta die or if they can play a bit of time. Yeah, yeah. F from my perspective, I can tell you, I wasn't thinking about. Uh, I, I wasn't thinking in the way that oh, I'm gonna lose ten seconds, but it's worth it if this happens. In my head, it's like whatever happens, happens. I'm gonna <laughs> do my normal clear, which is yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and another small tip that I have is that. Do you see how you're pinging in the river here? Mm -hmm. I usually ping in their face. I, I know you, you, you're gonna tell me about pinging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but if you see, I was like right in front of Lux's face when I was pinging there. No? Mm. Uh, but then, yeah. One, one ping in their face, one ping in the river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's ideally the best. One in their face, one in the river, because then it creates urgency. Uh -huh. And if I ping like more than five times, then they just mute my they, they all rage quit. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Now you can see both cases here, like mid and bot, both are like, you didn't match one single time. And I mean, sadly, you didn't have replay from before, but um, I mean, this video that I showed you regarding tempo, um, yeah, you, you get the point, you know? Yeah. It, it, it's all about tempo understanding. So I'll send you all this video from my mid game course, so you understand better. Okay. And it's something you should really focus on. And then as okay. well, um, went to farm and went to gank and just like... Mm -hmm. Those things will help you. I, uh, I think when to farm, when to gank, that's one of my biggest issues, honestly. Okay. Uh, mechanically, also, there's an issue here, you'll see, but. Uh, uh huh. <laughs> oh, frick. Okay. I mean, this, this is good. That it, no, don't worry about it. This is like, good, you know, because like, this is just something that you have to work on, and at least you can recognize what it is and how to work on, right? Essentially, here, you can clearly see that. So, I was so greedy. I was like, you know, I, I can, if I jump and Q her, she's gonna die. But then I uh -huh. didn't have Q, which was stupid. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then I, okay, I end up getting one kill, but I could have gotten another. Uh, uh, okay, so killed, if you want to learn champion mastery, uh, I'll send you the video as well so on Patreon too. But essentially, it's all about knowing what the limits of your champion is, knowing when to use your abilities, and knowing how to use your abilities. So. If you feel like your mechanics are like dog, watch the best players play Kha'Zix and s before they play, try to visualize and think how would they play. So let's say this is Kenyon, okay? Let's say we're watching Kenyon VOD. Before he does anything here, you have to think, okay, what would I do? And then you like visualize a bit, okay, I'll press my ult here, I'll press EQ here, um, and then you see what he does. And then you're like, yeah. wait, why does he play like that? So then you can understand better like yeah. what they're thinking, and this is learning from the best people in the world. You know what I mean? You're gonna get like at least master if you know how to learn properly. So my question to you here is that before you go for this, how could you play this better? It starts from here. How can I play this better from here? Yeah. Okay. So when I look at it, I, I don't know. I need you to give me the answer. Is my pathing good going from behind or should have I just walked from the opposite side of the wall I'm hugging right now? This, yeah, this so is good. From... This this wall's good. This is good. 
Oh, okay, okay. But the wise is good. The wise is good. Because if they walk, like if they start walking backwards, I can catch them and their yes. way walking backwards. Yes. If I go here and they walk backwards, then I can't match them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then the the reason I press my alt is because I saw that they have no ward. I don't want them to know I'm coming, so it's like mm -hmm. I have an advantage of of being stealth. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. I usually try to keep my jump for when I actually need it if someone like flashes or something. Mm -hmm. But here I was greedy. I I thought I can like catch the uh what's it called the Melio while she was behind. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I think it's fine using your ult only if you thought about any having stun and they can stun you. Mm. Mm -hmm. But in my opinion, if he has no stun and there's like no threat, I think Percy should just jump at him, kill him, hold your ult. Especially uh -huh. with QFOLF. Because you only have like yeah. one ult after, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, for me it was the opposite. It's like hold my E, use my ult. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you're behind him and you have like flash ult everything, I think it's fine, by the way. Okay. I mean, usually with Arya Wolf, you can like um, ult and walk behind them. With Q yeah, yeah. it's a bit different. You have to play Kha'Zix a bit differently. You actually, if you're behind him, should jump. So, right here, okay? You killed him. So now pay attention. You had like one ult left. So how could you have played this like better here? I think I could have just went for Twitch and kept my ult charge for when I needed I, can you Can you play the clip? I'm not sure if I immediately use my ult here. Yeah, you did. Yeah, this, this like... This ult was inefficient, not needed. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, it wasn't. It kept it longer, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so that's why, like, it's very important, like, just to just watch the replay and think about, okay, wait, how would I play this, you know? Because you, you come to the right answers, but in-game, you don't see it yet, right? But it's like, just yeah. keep about, like, keep digging it in, you know? And here as well, um, I want you to pay attention to your clicks. What did you see there? I actually didn't see what you're trying to... Okay, so here you hit him, right? Uh-huh. Pay attention now. What do you think's missing there? <laughs> I still don't see it, man. Help me. <laughs> okay, so basically you attack him and you're not moving at all. So now you're moving, okay. nice. Now you uh -huh. attack him. I didn't move. Yeah, you... Okay, yeah, because you... I went for the auto queue, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's still like... It was still cool, though, you see? Mm -hmm. This might be seeing very small, but like, okay, yeah. But actually, yeah, it's, yeah. it's like okay, ish though. But it looks very clunky. Your spacing looks very clunky. Mm -hmm. So you can even see here. You could probably like. Uh, move. I'm not used to good ping. I'm not. This is like my first week with 14 ping. <laughs> Wait, well, what was your ping before? 110. 100. What? Okay, then it makes sense. Okay, okay, this is what, bro. Okay. Yeah. It's a completely different playstyle then. Okay, no joke. We just got our servers last week, man. Okay, go custom game, practice, alt attack, move, alt attack, move. Mm, mm -hmm. Not even kidding yeah, here. Because sure. look at this. You look like a bot. <laughs> like, this is when I coach people are silver. This might sound rough, mm -hmm. but it's a fact. No, it's fine. So, like, this is something you have to work on, right? This is go custom game, and practice. Look here, alt attack, move. You see how we're standing mm -hmm. still? You're not even Q range yeah. anymore. You're right, yeah. And so, I mean, this is like a lot of small micro, but essentially, if you want to get high elo, you have to fix this. And here as well, mm -hmm. if you can reach him with like just moving to him, auto attack and Q is just better. Because then you finish him, right? Because Q has more range than your auto attack. But, mm -hmm. okay, that's a lot of micro, but okay. Perfect. Okay, right now, okay, pay attention. We have talked about tempo concept, okay? We've talked a bit about this, okay? So now, I want you to tell me what's going on. You literally got from 4-0 to 6-0. You got some kills. Yeah. Play is officially over. Now I'm just thinking that my wave is in a bad state, so I want to like shove it and uh, base. Uh, I'll probably have around an item or, or yeah, mm -hmm. 1,300 gold. Let's say after this wave, 1,400 something. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'll probably have an item. What, what I did was I pushed this wave and I immediately based. I think. Mm -hmm. mm, I would argue whether the wave is even bad, but I think it's good to push if Twitch loses all the farm as well. I think it's good. Mm -hmm. Okay? But okay, nice. Yeah. And then you base right now, yeah, right? I think yo, I greeted yo. the... Hey! Hey! Yeah, hey! I, I hey! Hey! The Fuck. Hey! Yeah. Okay, so in-game, what were you thinking here? There has to be like a thought so, process. I probably saw minute 13. Oh, there's still one minute until the plates are down. Let me get one plate. I 
Yeah, probably. Okay, so now I want you to tell me, you go to plating, what do you get from that? Money. Okay, what does the money lead into? Items. What item? But what are you gonna buy? Are you gonna buy a full item now? Because you took one plate? No, not a full item. Probably the dirt and maybe a long sword. Yeah. Which I can with the money I have. But yeah. Oh my goodness! Mamma mia! Holy sh Monster of Tempo Grief! Okay, this is this is reviewable for sure. Okay, so... Okay, we just talked about tempo, right? This uh -huh. is... Honestly, I'm not even kidding. This is like so important. This is so fucking important. This is like... Okay, look, 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 look. Base timers. Let's just let's just compare two things, okay? So basically we wrote down when you should base, when you're low, okay. You're low a bit, okay. When you have enough gold to buy an item, okay. When your camps are far away, check. When you want to path towards your ring condition, your ring condition is bot for your information. So I think if your yeah, yeah. bot is going bot, then I want you to go top to bot ASAP, right? And then when objects are about to spawn. Okay, yeah, held what's literally the one minute rule. Um uh, yeah. So when we, I we can discuss it later, that's fine. You can just sorry, continue yeah. with what Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that <laughs> when to base <clears throat> uh, the one minute rules objectives. So like one minute before objectives, usually it's one health, but one minute for you is fine. You have to like base. So why do you want to base? One minute before objectives? So you're as strong as possible right before you fight objective. And that's why you wanna base. So usually one minute before the objective, don't go for random play. Unless you're really sure you're gonna get something. Because imagine enemy jungler goes for a play and he didn't base before Drake. Well, guess what? He probably didn't spend his gold and you'll be strong in teamfight, right? And that's why you want to base before objectives. So if you look at the base timer, you broke every single rule that you could possibly break. Actually, uh -huh. though. Yeah, yeah. So on top of getting so many kills, instead of being, I called, available, okay, you're now like unavailable to help your laners. So let's say mid or top took a very good trade, you can't match him. But now I want you to think like this. Or what should you have done instead? I, I hope you know the answer here, but let's see. Mm -hmm. What should you have done instead? So, so, so here I should have just immediately based and got my items and started pathing towards top or mid. Just towards your misfortune, I think. He's f***ing bad. Yeah. And yeah, if you did that, right? And look at Hacker this time. With wave states, when, when I see this wave, I'm like, oh, it's it's slightly towards our turret, which means it's gonna slow push into them, and my misfortune is gonna miss a lot of farm. N so I, it's fine. Why, there. Yeah, I, I rarely play lanes, so to me, this looked very bad. I wanted to clear it. After clearing it, I was so greedy because I thought I can get a plate, which also is bad. Yeah. Um. I mean, the wave is fine to look at it. They have like four million minions. You have like three. Even this one's low, it's like it's gonna be very slow pushing. You're not even gonna miss that much. In my opinion, even you shouldn't even push this wave. Mm -hmm. But if you wanna be a bit greedy and they lose the farm anyway, I think it's fine. But you should never take this wave if enemy AD carry can catch this wave fully. Oh, okay. That's bad. But if let's say both don't get the farm, I think it's okay. Because you can still get a lot of farm here. But yeah. essentially, your gameplay comes down to this your base timer is not so hot, your jungle tracking. Not too hot, but this part especially, how to lose, you're completely outpiled with here. So, there's few things you can do in-game to recognize tempo state. Here's to look at this. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, it takes around 25 seconds to go to mid lane from base. For Hacker, it probably takes 20 seconds. So, he can be at mid lane at like 35. Right? Mm-hmm. And I'll do to now look at tempo. You see Hacker literally ganks your mid lane here. Your mid lane happened to survive here, but you didn't ping one single time. I'm sure of it. Yeah, no, I didn't. But you can see you're actually even if you're like six zero, you're not actually providing much help for your laners, because like I said, even if I would play low elo, if my laners are dying, I cannot play the game. I cannot 1v2, no matter how good I am. Unless I'm playing in like gold either or something. Right? Mm -hmm. And here, same thing, you're going top side. I hope you ping properly. Okay, here, if they die on bot, it's on them. You know what I mean? That's just on them. But yeah, I mean, you could probably see, like, a lot of the, um, the issues. And honestly, yeah, there's a lot already to work on. And you can just watch the videos that I'm going to send you and work on those. Okay. I, I don't know how long we did the session, but it's only supposed to be half an hour, but...
I didn't check the time really, but I think it's been half an hour already, I think. Yeah, it's, it's been probably more than half. Yeah, yeah but, but it's fine. But, um, so essentially, after having looked at this, okay, what do you think are the things you have to work on? Ah, things to work okay. on. Three so things I, only. I, I, I think, I think tempo uh, is one of the biggest things to work on. Uh, part of tempo is base timers. Okay, so now I'm going to break it down. So tempo, so what does tempo mean? Like, how do you measure and track it? So what do you have to look at specifically? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to word it in English, honestly. Give me a second to think of it. Take your time. Okay, so, so when I think of tempo, I think of uh, my status against enemy status. And, and what I mean by that is, have I used the gold in my backpack or is it just there and not used? What, what, and I compare it to them. So, for example, if I got a kill and then their jungler went back and had an item, he would have tempo on me because I haven't based. I have the gold, yes, I got the kill, but I haven't based, so I haven't really used my, uh, what's it called? I don't know what to gold. call it. My advantage. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so how do you break it down in one sentence or two sentences maximum? That's essentially what I'm trying to like get to, and probably it's hard mm. to get to the answer, so I'll answer it to it. But it's very simple. After a kill, essentially it comes down to this, right? What you play for, when? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So this is pay attention to enemy jungle timer. Mm -hmm. So every single time, every time you get a kill, or if you're in base, I need you mm -hmm. to think a bit about what you want to play for. Because yeah. like, why is it important? Because let's say you want to play both sides. That mm -hmm. you're not gonna go bot to the top for some reason, <laughs> you know. And this is already decided from base. Next thing would be when, because imagine that you know for a fact that um, you're going top side here, and you know that enemy drone has tempo after a kill. You have to be able to look at laners and be like, wait, are they fine or not? You know, mm -hmm. and understand that. So like at this moment, yeah. right, you got a kill, and you could see that you didn't ping one single time, and you weren't okay. aware at all of enemy jungle. So I'm gonna clip this for you so you can like watch it later. Um, not our enemy tempo, but you, but you can see the parents. Even though it's like a short session, you you can see like clearly yeah, yeah, yeah. what the what the similar similarities are. You know, so here for example, mm -hmm. clearly not aware of tempo, aware of enemy position again, right? Yeah, and as well um, base timers. <laughs> This is all base timers, but I mean, after sending the video, you'll understand better uh, base timer as well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. essentially, you got a lot of information, but I only want you to work on this, nothing else. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm serious, like, nothing else. Like, after this, okay, we can work on base timers, but for now, I would say put high emphasis on this until you feel like you do that, like, decently. Then you can start um, focusing on base time. Then just write to me. I'll send you the additional information you need. But okay. for now, this is enough. Like I would always advise people to focus on too many things. I would say keep it simple. Work on things that you should build your fundamentals on, which is this. And then go from there. Okay? And I can promise you, if you do these things better, you'll be more available on the map. And what does this mean? That means that you're basically everywhere and can match everything. Mm -hmm. So if whenever lane is winning, you're there to support them. But you could see here that um, after you kill Bolin, right? So you're like, yo! Instead of basing and being in base at like 13-10, B, like right now, mm -hmm. literally, instead of 13-10, you based at 14 minutes. Yeah. That's like 50 seconds later. You literally, your team has literally one kill per minute. In that one minute, you could have based and maybe kill top, mid, or bot. Mm -hmm. You could decide. Okay? So, yeah. I mean, that's it. Do you have any questions? No, I think it's very clear to me uh, what you were talking about regarding tempo. I didn't see it before, uh, I'll be honest. Like, w if, if I just saw a replay of this, I might have not really figured it out. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it would look pretty normal oh yeah i'm just getting more gold by going for that extra plate for that extra wave 
but now that I see it from another perspective that, oh, I could have saved 50 seconds, bought items, went somewhere else and got the same gold even more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I do want to really put high emphasis on that. Even if you get plating gold, it's not like you're gonna like, it's not like you need this plating gold to stomp them. I can promise you, you could probably like base here and you'd win every yeah. single fight without, you know, like needing this gold. Essentially, what you're doing is like you're getting gold, but you're not actually using the gold to do anything. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Alright, then I'll send those notes to you and then that's it. And uh, I'll, uh, right. when you have mastered each this goal, like just talk to me again, okay? And we can like uh, talk sure. a bit about this. Sure, sure, sure. You can just do it via text and I can send you the timers as well, but okay? Alright. Alright, sure. have a good Thank one. Thank you for the session, man. No problem. Are you gonna keep on streaming or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll probably right, play I'll one or two more games and then I'll probably eat dinner, yeah, I think, yeah. All right, man. Thank you. All right, peace, mate. Tschüss, tschüss. See you. See you.